This is the moment. The moment you've all been waiting for. Alright, this is Craig Richards and we're with the Cavalier Post Game Show. We're here with head referee Charles Williams. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, everybody's favorite person in the crowd is always a referee. But uh, tell me a little bit, um, one touch base, we're playing semi-pro basketball. Mm -hmm. And when people come and watch the game, what's some of the major differences they can see as far as high school rules, pro, pro rules, and semi-pro? Okay, uh, the rules are similar uh, as far as rotating, uh, where the ball comes in play, that's a little different. But the biggest difference is the players are a lot more skilled uh, in this league than uh, in high school. A lot of these guys have played college, they played overseas, so they're a lot more skilled. So it makes it a little easier for us refereeing. The one thing that you will get is everyone, nobody knows that they made a foul, so that's high school or semi-pro. Doesn't matter what level you play at, nope. you never think you committed the foul. Nope, nobody made a foul. But you always think you got fouled. Yeah, yeah. they do, okay. yep, they do. All right, the second part, you've coached, or uh, I'm sorry, you've refereed and in the head referee position. Pretty much all the Cavs, I think there's only one game this season you haven't um, set in that role. Uh, tell me, in your years of refereeing, this is a real deal in the ECBL. These are competitive guys, these are competitive teams. So tell me a little bit about the play that you see out on the court. Oh, I mean, like I said earlier, these guys are very skilled. I think I was talking to a few of them, and I think a few of them have actually played pro basketball overseas. And you pretty much get that on each and every one of the teams. You may have one or two guys that have played uh, pro basketball overseas. Well. Ref, I appreciate you taking the time out. Appreciate the work that you do here in the league itself. And good luck in the coming season. Thank you. Enjoy the games. All right. All right, back at the Cavaliers postgame show. We're going to take a little entertainment time out here. Introduce yourself. Hello, guys. My name is uh, Baba G Day. I go by G the Trainer. Um, I am the Cavaliers uh, uh, host and MC for every each and every home game. So when you come to the game, this is the voice that you hear during the game. And I got to tell you, that voice gets brutal at times on that, that away team. <laughs> it definitely does. I, I like to have fun with them. It's, it's all out of respect and love. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's no fun if, if I don't make fun of the other guys, you know? Well, I notice in the ECBL, and especially the teams that show up, you run that the whole game. You're talking smack. You're having a good time. But the other team comes up afterwards or – fist bump and they're having a good time with the game. They definitely are. They definitely are. And, and that's and, and, and that's uh, what makes it, you know, so special is that the guys understand that it's all in good fun. It's all in good competition. Um, and, you know, there's no hard feelings afterwards. Uh, I make sure to let them know that we hope that, you know, I thank them and make sure to let them know that they uh, get home safely, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, the other thing I noticed, too, is when people come to be entertained, which is a big part of what you do. Absolutely. They also see one heck of a basketball game week in and week out. Tell this me about your thoughts on the ECBL. Uh, I think the ECBL uh, has a lot of good uh, competition, a lot of good players, um, guys who um, obviously are able and capable to play at another level. Uh, we're talking about G League, overseas, maybe even the NBA, especially a lot of these younger guys. So um, whenever you come to an ECBL game, you're always going to see a good competition, especially if you have a guy like me talking trash on the side who helps raise that competition level. <laughs> Well, we also got one of the Cavs is away on overseas ball right now, so we're down one. We, yeah, we are. That is uh, Deshaun. Um, I, I believe he's playing in uh, maybe Egypt somewhere. I, I think somewhere in Africa, if, I, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And we're definitely expecting him back from talking to the coach before the end of the season. That's a big addition again back with the team. Absolutely. All right. I appreciate you stopping into the postgame show. Have a good time. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Keep welcoming the away team. <laughs> Let's call it that, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you for having a, me. A warm welcome from Petersburg. Right Absolutely. Here. Welcome back to the Cavalier Post Game Show. I'm here with player and coach Stephen Higgins. Coach, it was a heck of a game tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a long ride up here, and we already knew that this was the uh, number one team in, in, on our division. Uh, but uh, we knew we was going to have to play hard and, and fight the whole game. and. You know, yeah, great game. Coach, one thing about the Cavaliers, all their games so far, they own the paint. But I noticed the Bulls had shut them out of the paint in much of the first quarter and a good bit in the first half. What was the key to success of keeping them out of there? Well, uh, we did a lot of scouting and uh, 
watching a couple a couple games like the Hickory and the Coyotes, and uh, we knew the uh, the big guy. I don't know his name, the one with the dreads. He, he Mealy. Mealy. Yeah. Man, we 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 already knew about him, and uh, and we d we just try to stop that early. You know, we can't. We came with six people, so we, we knew we had to stop that early. And uh, so that was our game plan, just to stop stop it down low because we knew we was going to have to uh, fight hard for getting, you know, for them not to get no points in the paint. Coach, how tough is it to be a player coach in this league? Man, it is. I mean, it's, it's work. I mean, it's it's hard. It's so hard. I. It's hard as playing. It's just so hard. It's like having, you know, twelve kids, and and uh, <laughs> I mean, and then you you know you set up, and I mean, it's it's just it's it's a lot it's of work. A difficult challenge. Yeah. playing both roles. A difficult challenge. Now the other thing, you're playing what could arguably be the lead leading team, the lead yeah. league, uh, league leading team. Yes, sir. Let me try my English language for a change. <laughs> Okay. Now you've got some um, we, two other conferences we're looking at, but in this conference, you're definitely the number one team to beat. Yeah. How proud are your are your team tonight for the play that they pulled off? Man, I, I'm proud of my guys. I mean, you know, we only had six, and uh, I mean, I can't be more proud. Of. I mean, we didn't give up. We fought all the way to the end. I know the last probably about four or five minutes we had some. Uh, careless turnovers I mean of course we only have six people so yeah we was tired but man we you know that's what I like about my guys is, is we fight to the end coach I appreciate it yes um, sir appreciate y'all coming to Petersburg and good luck on the rest of the okay season. thank you thank we are back with the Petersburg post game show and we're here with Donald Rutherford um, tonight you're tied as a leading scorer uh, Elijah Moore pulled down 38, and you also pulled down 38, but you uh, pulled off a double-double as well. Unofficially, I've got you at eight rebounds. Tell me about the play of the team tonight. Um, I mean, our chemistry is growing. You know, we're a collective unit. We drove up here together, and that's what we're trying to build on. I think that we shared the ball pretty well and gave it a good shot. You know? It's early on, the Cavaliers, and I talked to your coach a few minutes ago. Cavaliers own the paint. They pretty much owned it all season, but early in the game, you guys shut it down. They weren't able to get the easy buckets. Tell me a little bit about your play and how you guys pulled that off. Um, so we looked at film prior to this. That's what we do uh, together. So um, we, we came in with a game plan and we executed to what we thought would be our advantage is making them kind of shoot outside and make sure that we anchor the paint, control the rebound, so we can get into transition. Okay. It's a good, strong game. There's a lot of times they push out to a double-digit lead, and sometimes as far as 16 points early in the game. You guys clawed back in every time. Uh, it seems it was almost a live and die beyond the arc for you guys tonight. You're shooting pretty well on a lot of spots. Um, little streaking back and forth, but you had some runs where you're hitting solid. Tell me about your outside shooting. Um, with us, we want to move the ball and make sure that our shooters touch the ball. We work on it. We just want to knock down shots, you know? So we were a little streaky today. Um, we have no give up. Like, we're going to fight. So regardless of the score, we're going to go out, and as long as we go out with that attitude, we're good. Also, it looked like you guys are pretty good when you're talking about team play. You were able to get the ball to your key players, and they were able to get some separation, a lot of different moves, uh, a lot of clean shots. Um, overall, feel pretty good about your play tonight? Yeah, I feel really good. Um, like I said, I've been preparing for this for about a week. Um, we like to move the ball a lot and make sure the ball does a lot of the movement. So we don't want to dribble and drive and do all this and do that. We want to let the ball do the work for us. So our shooters and our scorers, the ball touches the right people's hands. That's what we try to do. So you're rolling into the second half of the season. What do you see for the team? How do you see finishing out the year this year? Um, I feel like that we're going to have a good shot to, to make a run. We like to come together in the end, make sure we get out all the kinks. And then when we go ready for this playoffs, people should be afraid of us because we're going to come in battle testing and ready to go. There you go, folks. Bulls are going to be competitive all season. We're going to see them again. Um, look for this team. Keep an eye on them. They're going to be tough. Appreciate you. Appreciate the game. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Yes. Welcome back to the Cavaliers postgame show. We are with America's favorite Cavalier, <laughs> Elijah Moore. <laughs> Elijah, you uh, you dropped 38 points today, unofficially 14 rebounds. So you got a double double again. Uh, you've locked up. Tell me a little bit about the play today. Uh, started out pretty tight in the first quarter, uh, and they took a lead actually early on in mm -hmm. the first. So tell me how the team was playing overall. Uh, we start. We started off the game kind of slow, so they came, they came out and made a few threes, and we had to adjust our defense. We started out in our 
and are pressed, then we somehow ended up getting out of it. So it caused them to start making some shots, get too comfortable. So second half, we decided just going to keep the press on the whole until the whole game was over. And that's how we were able to get the win today. Yeah, that was very aggressive. I also noticed that they did an excellent job early on in the game of shutting the paint down, someplace we normally own. Mm -hmm. They were keeping us out in a pretty solid defense. How did we overcome that? Uh, we tried to we tried to spread the floor out, putting people in the corner so that way they could, you know, help and be in the paint or they'll get a defensive three seconds. So put shooters in like Kevin Barnes and BJ, putting them in the corner so we could spread the floor, they would get some penetration. Okay, the other thing we saw, a lot of times we kick out the double-digit leads, but they would crawl back in, yeah. pull a lot of times within one or two points, and then we'd shoot back out. What do you see as the biggest reason that we'd see such a fluctuation in the point spread tonight? Uh, I think I think it's because they took a lot of threes. So if you take a lot of threes, you're going you to have your spurts where you're going to make them, and you have spurts where you miss them. So when they started missing them, that's when our leads started going up. They, didn't, they attacked the paint some, but... I saw a lot of threes out there. So, What's the biggest key to success, you think, tonight for the overall game? Um, the biggest key to success was just being aggressive on defense. I think we let the foot, we took our foot off the gas on defense in the first half, so that's how they got back into the game. Okay. Elijah, again, another great game, great performance by the Cavaliers. 9-0, no, how's that feel? Good. <laughs> as long as we win it, I'm, I'm cool. All right, thanks for joining right. the show. Appreciate All right. it. Thank you. We are back with the Cavaliers post game show. The coach is taking my chair, so I'm over in the right hand chair today. Oh, I took his. Yeah, this is my side. This is my good side. <laughs> At least that's what they say. I guess this is a good side from the, from the back. Nah, I don't know. Let's go. All right. What do we got? Coach, we got to be excited. 9 0. Okay. Uh, it's a heck of a game today. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got offensive and defensive goals that we try to achieve. Yes. The first goal. Is yes. a win. We pulled that off. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, we did. Now, people watching the game today, let's hit a couple of highlights. Uh, first of all, Walter Williams not in the game today. Right. Uh, if they're watching, obviously they've seen that. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, he's still hurt. He's nursing a high ankle sprain. Um, he's walking. He's been started walking this week, and uh, he thinks that he should be good for next week when we play the, uh, the, the Coyotes, which is a very, very, very good basketball team, a well coached, and they're, they're going to come to win. Well, one of the things we see from the Cavaliers, we got a main player like Walter that's out of the game. Okay. Team still merges, still plays well together, still playing team ball. Yeah, we we have a lot of good players on our team. Walt is a, he brings a lot to the game, but he he himself even said that we still have what it takes to go ahead and win this game. So, I think that uh, um, him being out help other people step up and come to the plate and help us get this win. Well, I think the big key is we're talking about the Cavaliers are not a, by any means, a one-dimensional team. Right. You're talking a five, six, sometimes seven-dimensional team. Right, right, right. We had a lot of people in double figures today, and it was, which helped, helped us get this win. Something a little surprising, okay. um, but we expect in the ECBL, okay. uh, Cavaliers own the paint. They always own the paint every game. Today, That's what's up. <laughs> today, yeah. Uh, they shut down the paint yeah, uh, yeah. In, in the early part of the game. Tell us a little bit about that play and what was going on. Well, I guess they did They, looked, they did their research. You know, they're, they're a good, uh, well-coached team, and um, they saw that we like to dump the ball in the paint. So what they did was they packed the paint up. They were playing really loose. So they packed the paint up, and uh, we had to figure out different ways to get our guys, our big guys the ball. Now, Mealy Pay is a big, strong part of our inside game. Absolutely. Uh, he didn't actually step into the game until about the 522 mark in the first, right. first period. Mm -hmm. um, Game fairly close at that time. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, all through the first half, it was fairly close. Right. Then we do a massive 14-0 run mm -hmm. with two minutes left in the first half. Right. And bounce out to a double-digit lead going into the half. Right. So what was the key to that run? Oh, the key to the run was uh, defense. Uh, we have great coaching staff. Um, uh, Coach Irby said, hey, let's, let's go to the, the full court press. And then we ran the press, and we got a lot of turnovers out of it, and we were able to get the win. Now, they've got uh, some solid shooters on the team. They do. In fact, uh, Elijah finished the game with 38 points. He did. Um, and oh, their, their lead shooter, Rutherford, also finished with 38 did points. Did he? Yes. Elijah's going to be real upset when he gets those last two points. <laughs> He's going to be upset. He missed those two free throws. He should have made them. So. Uh, yeah, they're a little surprising yeah. from Elijah. But, you know, 38 <laughs> points, eventually his arm got to get a little tired. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, now, Elijah pulls a double-double. We okay. got, uh, I think, another another player may have had that. I think Mealy did. Uh, Mealy, I'm pretty sure, did. He yeah. had at least 10 rebounds. Yeah, 14 points. 
Yeah, so overall, another solid play. Mm -hmm. One of the things we saw a little bit was the streak play. Okay. Um, and I think it was more so from the bull shooting. Okay. We would push out to a double-digit lead. Right. Then we'd see that come back to about one, two, or three points. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those runs seemed when they were shooting beyond the arc, if they were on, mm -hmm. they were coming back tight. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about that roller coaster and what, we were, what were we doing to try to stop that outside shot? Well, the thing about it, we knew that this team could shoot. We knew that. We knew that number two, Avery Patterson, is a great shooter. Donald Rutherford showed me some things that I haven't seen him doing in, in previous games, but he definitely always, always working on his game, getting better. And I think that he's one of the all-stars on that team. You know, every every team has two all-stars. I think those two are. They showed up today. Those are the two that, that really put the team on their back and, and showed us uh, that they wanted to win the game. Um, but you said as far as a roller coaster, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's late in the season. This game number nine, I think, you know, fatigue starts to catch in. So... We have a lot of a couple of mental lapses on defense, and by doing that, such, they're such a good team. They were able to get to the open man and hit a couple of open shots. So, that, second that second week in a row that we faced some pretty solid shooters, especially right. from the outside. Yes, sir. Uh, we're able to overcome that. It looks like the team stays in pretty calm mode, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on in the game. Something pretty impressive with the team. Right, right, right. Well, the thing is, it's about discipline. We got to have better discipline on defense, but um. At the same time, we don't get too down on ourselves. We make sure that we uh, do, go back to the fundamentals. Whenever we get outside of who we are, we bring it back down to the basic level and go to fundamentals, and then we build on that. All right. Coach, let's talk about one of your favorite topics. Okay. Uh, we're going to the foul line. Oh, boy. How do um, we do? <laughs> we, we sent the Bulls to the foul line 33 times. Yeah, I know. The rest are really happy today. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> with, I'm surprised they're not tired. <laughs> All now, the whistles they blew. Now, the Bulls took advantage of it. They shot uh, 26 of 33. 26 points in the free throw line. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, a uh, little bit about the play there. Do you think the games were just called a little tighter today than usual? I think it was. I think I definitely think it was. I think that um, uh, the, the refs uh, wanted to make sure that they had a presence on the court, on the game. So, And they did really well. They were successful with that. And for the Cavs, unofficially, mm -hmm. 15 for 21. How do you feel about that? That's good. It's not a bad shooting percentage. We didn't get to the free throw line more than. Uh, a little bit more. <laughs> There's a couple times I thought, uh, especially with Cage and a couple of our big boys down underneath, right. that uh, some of his calls seemed mm -hmm. a little loose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And not exactly in our favor. Yeah. I think um, that if a, if a player's horizontal, it might have been a foul call on that. Uh, horizontal <laughs> in the air and right. ended up landing on the ground. Right. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing that we saw, too, is uh, we go late in the game. Okay. Um, we push out to 20 points. Yes. Um, had, a, had a couple of shots down on the other end that changed. But how do you feel about being able to push out to 20 points on a shooting team like this? I think it's great. Um, not only are they a shooting team, but they play good defense too. Um, I, I know that uh, our teams that are come from the South, they like to run up and down. It's like a run and gun type thing. And they were really successful with that this time. So I think they're a really good team. Well, uh, one point short of our offensive goal. Yeah, yeah, 129. Uh, I know, right? But defensive goal got blown out of the water. Uh, you can't complain about 129. Ah, uh, yeah, no, you can't. You can't. And I think that uh, 114, we looked like we had a solid defense. We had a lot of pressure defense going right. on. It's kind of hard to account when those guys are hitting those threes. Mm -hmm. We still, the same as last week, we have folks in their face mm -hmm. when they're shooting those balls. So not a lot of separation, not a lot of super clean shots. Right. Um, See, the thing about it, though, is like these two teams, these last two teams that we played, we know that they can shoot. And we know who the shooters are, so we just got to make sure we get them off the line. And we can do better than that. We got to play them again, so we'll see how that happens next time. We can work a trade in the offseason, but I can tell you what, I like our team. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I like our like, team. I don't think I want to trade. I, I, I do want to say one thing, though, for uh, being the fact that I was a part of both franchises. This is the first team in Petersburg, it's a semi professional basketball team, that won nine straight games. So nine and no. We, we made history today. Well, that history is still rolling in this season. 9 and 0 for a start. Yes, competitive sir. team. Yes, sir. Looks like we're set to make a run. Yeah, yeah. But again, game by game. Game by game. Quarter by quarter, possession by possession. LNNUSA.com. His average is going up. I've been practicing. Coach, <laughs> thanks for stopping in today. Oh, well, Congratulations well, no, no, no. on Thank the win. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching the Petersburg Cavaliers post-game show on LNNUSA.